Your business with Tataru is finished. My, what a thoughtful surprise. Hmm. Whatever would we do without her? Indeed. And she's right, you know. It hasn't been all doom and gloom. It was like a lifetime ago that Master Louis Soir gathered us together to form the Circle of Knowing. Since then, we have experienced much. But rather than feeling wiser, the more I learn, the more I find my knowledge lacking. Forsooth, as a student, vainly did I believe that I held the secrets of creation in my grasp. Yet that which I had seized was but an insignificant sliver of what awaited in the wider world. Every encounter, every experience hath served to open mine eyes, enlightening and humbling me in equal measure. Even from those whom I called enemies have I learned many a valuable lesson.
What will we learn at the edge of the universe, I wonder? Ultima Thule, where the bringer of the end makes her nest. <laughs> I, for one, can't possibly imagine. But whatever awaits us there, we will survive. We must. For her. It feels like only yesterday that we went on that mission to Drybone. We've both changed much since then, have we not? <laughs> We've come far together, and if we have aught to say about it, we'll go further still. Aye, we will avert this calamity and return home. In preparation for which, we must give thought to what we hope to achieve after the proverbial dust has settled. What with the primals and Asians all but dealt with, I suppose we'll need to look for new hobbies. In all seriousness, though, in uniting to overcome a common foe, the disparate peoples of the world have found a way forward together. It's a truly gratifying sight to see. Indeed. Though it was many years in the making, we have successfully set in motion the gears of fundamental change. With this, we have fulfilled our humble role as a symbol of hope. And I dare say it is time to bow out. After all, there is no shortage of hands to bear the torch in our stead. You know, I never really considered I might live long enough to see an after. But even if my time as a scion came to an end, I don't expect that much will change. Traveling the world, going wherever the wind blows, lending a hand to those in need. A journey for journey's sake. It doth suit thee well. I must confess, I too have yearned to see more of the world. If thou art amenable to the suggestion, I would accompany thee. Mine ability to affect an air of normalcy through artful disguise is much improved, thou must concede. Aye, well, improvement is relative. You still look suspicious no matter what you wear. What of you, Ishtola? Any grand plans? Why, continue my quest for knowledge, naturally. To begin with, I wish to know the state of the reflections, to which end I must find a means to travel between worlds. Tis the least I must do if I am to keep my promise. Should my pursuits prove unduly arduous, I won't hesitate to call on you. And in return, I will take you to see Reen one day. I'm sure you cannot wait to see the fine young woman she has become. <laughs> Spare me. And what of thee? What wouldst thou pursue at duty's end? Here's yours. My apologies for the wait. Well, shall we make a toast? To victory. To our comrades. To the future of the star.
Oh. What brings you here? Ah, so you were worried that the Levia household might again be gripped by turmoil. <laughs> All is well, I assure you. In my letters home, I had made mention of Astinian, you see. My mother wished to meet the legend in person, and so we arranged to have a spot of tea together. Where were you in my hour of need? Fell beasts I can face, but I'm not made for idle chit-chat with lords and ladies. Well, I for one thought you held your own. Mother was the picture of delight. <laughs> I might have been delighted myself, were we in a tavern with more agreeable drink. The thought of fleeing crossed my mind, but what then? I'd never hear the end of it, least of all from Tataru. I'm sorry. It was not my intent to cause you such distress. It's just... It was one of the things I didn't want to leave undone ere we set forth. That's not to say I think we won't be returning. Yet, given what lies ahead, I did not wish to leave for later that which I could do today. After all, tomorrow is never promised. It's fine. Not like I had better things to do. Besides, seeing you with your mother brought back fond memories of my own. Be we rich or poor, family is family. Well, it's past time we were on our way. Wait! Since I left home, I've made a great many mistakes. Mistakes for which I can never make amends. But through it all, you didn't give up on me. To have returned here with you at my side, it means more to me than you know. Thank you, from the bottom of my heart. <sighs> Forgive me, but it needed to be said. I'm the one who owes you thanks. Were it not for you, I would not be alive today nor come to terms with Nidhogg's spirit. I am ever grateful. Well, we needn't make it a competition. You know, this must be what Heidelin meant when she spoke about depending on one another. However treacherous the road before us, together we will prevail.
Oh. <laughs> Knowing them, they're probably dreaming about the celestial adventures to come. Just as well. They've been running themselves ragged of late. Unlike you and the others, I'm a few steps removed from the danger and excitement. The things you all get up to never fail to impress me. But by the same token, I can't help but worry. Not only for your safety, but... but for your happiness. After everything you've sacrificed, you earned it a thousand times over. From the simple pleasures of tucking into a hearty meal or, or collapsing into a comfortable bed, to the grand triumphs of visiting legendary lands or finding true love, you deserve all the joy in the world. There is so much that life has to offer, so much to be treasured and shared with those we hold dear. So promise me this. Come what may, you won't give up on your own happiness. When you're out there fighting tooth and nail, it's all too easy to forget. But in the end, your passions will be your greatest strength of all. Remember that. This feels... familiar. Well, tis good to be... Uh, wait! What are you... What am I... Gods, don't tell me I fell asleep. Not that there's any shame in it, but you were sleeping like babies. Oh. How embarrassing. Not a word to anyone. Understood? Not one word. I'm told that sleeping in proper beds of your own choosing is a much more effective way to prepare for battle. <sighs> so, what were the two of you doing here? I had a few books to return to the library. Thought I'd take care of it while I could. And you?
You will never get what you want. Not even the battle you pine for so dearly. In that transcendent moment, what was it that I sought in you? And what was it that you sought in me? How often have we thus assembled? To combine our knowledge and seek solutions to the problems before us. Back at the Waking Sands, it was all we could do to address the most minor of troubles. Who could have realized what we'd find when we began to look to the sources of the realm's woes? At the Rising Stones, we made great strides and shared many moments. From the joyous to the sorrowful. We've had occasion to call other places home too. Be it Ishgard or Kugane, we were fortunate to find sanctuary wherein we might take stock and continue our fight. I was honored to host this company in the Crystarium, to stand with you all as we confronted the truth of the star itself. And now from this place, we go to fight the most important battle of all. The Forum has sent word. The Ark is ready. The Loperates naturally will be commanding the vessel. They will see the eight of you to Ultima Thule. Upon arriving, your objective is to find and vanquish Meteon. As a final formality, the Forum bade me ascertain your resolve. So, are you certain you wish to do this? We are. Then, ere you report to Thalmasane, I leave you with these words. You must triumph. What that means will differ for each of you. To make it back home, or to simply avert doom, or perhaps something else altogether. 
Yet whatever it is that drives you, I have faith in its power to see you through. So please, triumph. Triumph, as we who remain behind believe you will. Let us be off then. Wait! Both Kryl and I will be there to see you off, but as your receptionist, I feel I need to say this here. Safe journey, all of you, and... Be safe. All present and accounted for. Good. As you will have heard, the Ark is ready. All that remains is to board and be on your way. Oh, I've seen my fair share of tight schedules, but this was bloody murder. But we did it. We finished the ship. It's safe, fit for purpose, and looks good to boot. Aye, it's a garland through and through. I really don't know what we'd do without you. Thank you for everything. Well, the work was hard, but we've learned a lot from it. After all, it's not every day you get tasked with building a star-faring vessel. In case you're wondering about payment, the ongoing existence of the world ought to do. But feel free to throw in a colorful recounting of your journey on your return. So, have you thought of a name? A name? Wasn't everyone just calling it Father's teeny tiny toy boat? Well, seeing as its purpose has changed, I thought a more eloquent name was in order. I suggested as much to Fortuno, who seemed quite amenable to the idea. As you know, this vessel is the culmination of heretofore unprecedented collaboration. And though said collaboration is owed to the Scions, there is another whose noble deeds made our work possible. From a fragment of Dalamud, we obtained not only advanced materials such as refined adamantite, but the knowledge to traverse the stars. And this fragment would not have found its way to us had the Archon Luiswa not fought to protect this world. And in so doing, laid down his life. 
Now that the vessel stands complete, I cannot help but wonder if it was more than mere happenstance. If it was my father's intention to guide us here. In the hopes that his guidance will see you all safely home, I name the vessel after that self-same fragment of Dalamud he delivered unto us. The Starship Ragnarok. Sorry for the wait. I got everyone you asked for, and not a one less. What are you all doing here? Oh, I invited them. The representatives of those tribes with religious inclinations. You've done a fine job of readying the Ragnarok, but for it to take flight, we'll of course need the power of the Mother Crystal. Given its immense size, however, transporting it would be an absolute logistical nightmare, not to mention we'd need to shatter it into tiny shards for feeding to the engines. But a brilliant idea came to me. We convert the crystal's energy into forms that can transport themselves! Thou wouldst employ summoning, or should I say, its precursor, creation magics. Care to explain for our benefit? As you may have witnessed at Bestways Barrow, the Loperits are capable of creation magics, which they use to shape the moon's environment. Yet simple though they make it seem, tis a highly advanced and exacting art. To perform it correctly requireth that the wielder holdeth the object in his mind's eye in clearest detail. Hence the ancient's meticulous management of concepts. Drawing upon this art, the Asians conceived of summoning as we know it. A derivative that replaceth the complexity of concepts with the simplicity of zealotry to make manifest a creation. I see. By combining the Loperit's magics and the tribe's faith, we convert the Mother Crystal into primals of purer form and greater obedience. Summoning as it was intended, one might say. Indeed! Indeed! While Hydaelyn gave us the ability to use creation magics, she forbade us from using it to make anything possessed of a soul, or similar. She didn't say anything about fulfilling the desires of others, though. So, borrowing our friend's faith, we'll create deities using the Mother Crystal's power and send them to the Ragnarok! Am I the only one here concerned about the risk of being turned into a tempered minion? Oh, right, I was getting to that. From what I've read in Charlian tomes, it appears the Asians incorporated an additional nasty element into their summoning method. The fervent desire to assimilate others into one's belief. Beings thus created are instilled with the self-same desire and use their powers to enthrall people, starting with the summoner. In contrast, our creation magics, the original and the best, except no substitutes, don't incorporate any of that rubbish. So there's no risk of tempering. I mean, if the being was on the scale of Zodiac, you might feel a little tug. But I think we'll be safe enough. Truth be told, I do not understand the intricacies of this plan. But none of us would ever turn our backs on you. 
When the avatars of our faith ran amok, you intervened without decrying we who birthed them. Where others vilified and suppressed us, you offered understanding and friendship. In gratitude, we will share with you the true expressions of our gods, not malevolent deities, but benevolent saviors. All right, you lot, we're heading to the ethereal sea. Stay in sight, else you're liable to get lost. Lead the way. May we have a moment? In anticipation of the day man might journey to the stars, we developed these. Portable teleportation devices. One for each of you, designed to work in tandem. Press the button on one, and in a matter of moments, all eight will activate and send their owners back to the Ragnarok. There is no telling what hazards you may encounter. If you find yourself separated or lost, please do not hesitate to use them. Be safe, all of you, and come back. You as well. I pray you take care. Looks like everything is in order. So I'll go ahead and board. A few of my fellows will remain to assist with the summonings, but rest assured, the vessel won't want for competent crewing. If you are ready, then you should board as well. Go, and Godspeed. I hope you have everything, because I can't be bothered turning back. Right then, make yourselves comfortable. We're setting off in just a moment. It's... Incredible. This is Forshano. Can you hear me? The preparations for the summonings are complete. In accordance with the 14th phase of the plan, we have moved the Ragnarok to the launch site. The gates are open. You may depart when ready. As ready as we'll ever be. Let's get going. Oh, come on. The burnt out stars go 
got more firing into Billy. Try it again with feeling. Me? B but I... No need to be coy, brother. Do it. And do it well. If you all insist. <clears throat> Onward, unto the distant stars, and beyond! Ragnarok, engage! <laughs> Engage! into the sky, I cannot imagine a greater indignity! <laughs> Do not sulk so, for thy mighty winds exist not only to buffet and batter. Nay, they may serve also to thrust forth with vigor! Such is thy glory, and thus it is an occasion to rejoice! So come, let us revel! Ah. So long as the wind blows freely, I suppose all is as it should be in creation. to them a storm, that they may pierce the firmament and fly free!
piece? Good. Sleeping way? Report? <laughs> All's well. Fantastic, even. Thanks to the power of those primals, the engines are roaring and we're ripping along. All values are also within projected ranges. Time to destination is eight carats. Perhaps seven at a pinch. All right, let's go over some points of caution. Our destination, as you know, is Ultima Thule. Lest you wonder, the place is not a star so much as a patch of emptiness. That's the extent of what our equipment could determine, anyway. From what we know of Meteon, she's likely used Dynamis to obfuscate her location. So, in conclusion, we'll only know what's there when we get there. See to it the ship's ready to take off at a moment's notice. We'll support the search as best we can, but it'll be your paws on the ground, assuming there is any. But everything will be fine, I'm sure. Heidelin believes in you, so you ought to believe in yourselves. Just don't do anything I wouldn't, like waiting too long to use those portable teleporters of yours. Personally, at the slightest sign of trouble, I'd mash the button to bits, and you should as well. Understood. We promise to be careful. I suggest you brace yourselves. We're about to arrive, and the vessel will shake a good bit. Greetings. Can you hear me? So this is Meteon. Oh. Have you met one of my sisters? I don't remember meeting you myself. But I do know that you're from Atheris. Why have you come? All you had to do was wait. I would have delivered to you your ends. We didn't ask for that. I don't understand. All life is destined to end. Why choose to prolong your suffering? Effort, ambition, love... They amount to naught. Happiness, should you find it, is inevitably lost. Stolen away by events beyond your control. There is no logic nor meaning in it. You think there is convince yourselves but it's all a cruel accident come now I speak the truth a truth you would recognize if you looked up at the night sky unbroken emptiness 
cold, dark, and silent. Your world, like every other, is but a blemish upon its perfect fabric. Life is an anomaly. It is unnatural and cannot continue. The sooner you accept this, the easier it will be. Just to be clear, we're not here to argue with you. We know that life is fleeting, and that in the short time we have it, we're not assured happiness. Indeed. I've seen far more sorrow in the eyes of many I've met. I myself have plenty of regrets. And one day they'll die with me. Gone to dust with my good deeds and unfulfilled dreams. But we accept this. That our existence may seem pointless. That sorrow, rage and despair will always dog our heels. And we press on regardless. That is why Heidlin guided us here. In her boundless love for mankind, she has prepared us for this trial, and in her name, we have come for you. Yes, I sense it. A burning passion like unto fury. I know it well. For the same passion once burned in many a star before yours. Suffocated and extinguished now. the bounds of my ultimate, where emotions dictate reality, where resignation and acceptance unite to embrace the end, where those who yet valiantly cling to life can thrive. Tancred? Meteon has gone as well. Mayhap he awakened first and gave chase. Uh, everyone? It appears we are at our destination. This, this is Ultima Thule. Not that we knew what to expect. But I wasn't expecting this. From atmospheric composition to ambient temperatures, all readings are within permissible range. This place is capable of supporting life. If that's the case, then Thancred may well have gone on ahead. Let's go and have a look. you to perform a full inspection of the ship as well as a biological scan. So it was that the brave wayfarers arrived at last at Dream's End.
In following their path walked and history written, I am made keenly aware of one truth. Though the curtains may fall again and again, so long as others take the stage, ever shall there be more tales to tell. So, let them bring it to a close, I say. Let the curtains fall upon this. The final chapter in the tale of the star. I is this a dead star? and breathe. I live and breathe. Well, the environment itself shouldn't kill us. Well then, let us search for Thancred while exploring the area. The ship we leave in your care 